So I often get asked what the difference is, what are the things that you should do when you're sampling your soil for soil life, microbiology, bacteria, fungi. Well, in this video, I'm gonna take you through a few simple steps, how to sample your soil when you're looking at microbiology. Hi there, it's your man Simon Soil here. Today I'm going to talk you through a few things you need to consider when you're sampling your soil for microbiology. Now a few people this week have already asked me this exact same question and those guys have already been sampling previously for basic chemistry, but a lot of people haven't actually tested their soils at all. And some of these principles actually apply to both chemical and biological analysis. So join me today, I'll take you through these simple steps to help you get on sampling your soil for microbiology. Let's get straight into it. So before you start, you will want some bags to put your samples into. I use these Ziploc type. They're really robust and strong and easy to close when your hands are cold and wet. They're large as well. That's useful because sometimes I might even be working directly off the spade. So 9 by 12 inches is typical size and I recommend try not to go too much smaller than that if you can. Before I take them out into the field I'll mark them up with a sharpie pen. I'll put the date that I'm collecting the samples, the reference area and also my contact details. Pro tip here, I will also write on the back of the bags the same information as well. That's great, just in case something gets rubbed off during transport. Now there's a number of different tools that you can use from samplers, augers, or I'm going to use this one, my spade, it's my favourite, it used to be my granddad's, and it's probably what most of you will have for sampling as well. But make sure that you give it a good wash first, Use some antibacterial dish soap if you can, give it a scrub all over, especially around the blade, and then give it a rinse with the hose pipe and leave it to stand to dry. If you want to be a little bit more diligent, you can, of course, use other additives as well for spraying, like this 70% isoprol, which is great because it kills out all the nasties and then it also evaporates shortly afterwards as well. Now I'm sampling on a cloudy day just after it's been raining, which is ideal because I know that the microorganisms I'll be collecting in the soil won't be harmed by the sun's UV. The exact area I'm sampling is going to be a grassy area because I think that a lot of you will possibly be in a similar situation where you're taking over land, perhaps it used to be a permanent pasture or an old field, and you're looking to make that into a vegetable patch or possibly putting in some raised beds, things like that. So where the grass is long like it is here, always good to mow it first and just removes that top layer of organic matter, makes the soil a little bit more accessible to you when you're trying to get in there with your spade a little bit later on. So before I begin, I will mark out a square with the spade. I'll just go around a few times to cut the top surface layer of grass and roots. This soil is very clay, so it's quite heavy. It's got lots of stones in, so I have to go around a few times just to get the spade in deep enough to get the sample from the depth I want. Um, you'll notice here on the back of the spade I've actually marked a black line. I've done that with a sharpie. I've basically measured out 12 centimetres from the spade tip. Little pro hack. That means I've got a visual reference point for whenever I put the spade into the soil. I know I'm going straight into the aerobic zone, which is precisely where we want to be when we're testing soil for microorganisms like bacteria and fungi. So go around a few times. I'll lift the top clod off and then lift a fraction of the soil up from this particular spot and I'll get my bag. You see why you need that wide opening now. I can actually get almost the corner of the spade into it, but actually I'll use a, a hand trowel as well to put the soil in the bag. You can see the dog's trying to help me as well. Uh, another little pro tip, the Plastic gloves you get from petrol stations are fantastic if you want to make sure that your hands are sterile and that can be quite good if you're going between different sites but do remember it's single-use plastic so 
maybe you'd be better off using some normal gardening gloves that you can sterilize. The other method you can use is this V method where you just kind of cut a V shape into the turf and then move one section over and access the soil. Here you can see the top layer of turf, that black section is kind of the thatchy organic matter area which we want to try and avoid and focus on the soil underneath. And so once we've got our soil, put it in a chill bag. These ones from the supermarket are quite good freezer bags. Um, here is my finished sample, which I will probably do something with and put it in the lab. So there you go, that wraps this video up. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions or comments, stick them in the comments section below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.